The times have changed. A big thanks to my sponsors, Ibis Cycles, Camelback, PNW Components, Kitspo Cycling Apparel, Cali Protectives, Shimano, Fox, WTB, and Jensen USA. Any purchases at Jensen USA from the below links will directly help support my channel as well. A key element of modern geometry is the reach measurement, and I would say this is the number one culprit for bike size confusion in this day and age. These changes in geometry have definitely affected how modern bikes are more or less meant to be ridden. The modern steeper seat tube angles put you in a much more upright position when you're climbing. That's really cool because it also means you're more neutrally balanced on the bike and that helps a ton when you get to technical obstacles and you need to maneuver the bike around in order to clear them. As seat tube angles got steeper, reach had to get longer in order to keep a comfortable seated position. Now this also means that wheelbases have gotten quite a bit longer as well. It seems like every year head tube angles get quite a bit slacker. And this used to be seen as very detrimental to climbing prowess, but with the new steeper seat tube angles, it's really not that bad by any means at all. All these things add up and become very significant on the trail. Not just do the bikes ride well, but they respond really well to the more new school and aggressive riding styles that a lot of us wanted to use, but simply weren't able to because bikes are being designed for people that simply didn't ride that way. There we go. A good example of this change are simple flat trails. With traditional geometry, you would stay seated on the bike a lot and you'd literally steer by turning the handlebars a ton. With the newer slacker head angles and the longer wheelbase, you really need to lean the bike much more in corners and that requires getting out of the saddle very frequently. We've seen the intersection of a steep seat tube angle and the need for an out of the saddle aggressive riding style. Now, the solution to this is a deeper drop seat post. I talked the other day about how to figure out what size dropper post fits on your bike, and a big part of why we're trying to fit deeper drop posts is because of this new school geometry. This all adds up to mean that we can no longer size bikes based solely off the seat tube. The days of 15, 17, 19, and 21 inch size frames are simply no longer relevant. When we're riding these new school bikes downhill, that new longer front center measurement provides a ton of stability, and for the rider, that translates into a ton more confidence. This means we're indeed going faster than ever before and we're sending it. We're sending it bigger than we ever sent it before. For a lot of us, that's super fun. My point with all of this is that sizing is still relative. Manufacturers have a recommended height guide published for their models. Now, I recommend basically following this. It would be a big mistake to get caught up on one specific number in bike's geometry. It's simply not that cut and dry. Bikes are a complete package. If you're looking at the recommended height guide and say you're right on the cusp between a medium and a large, I'd recommend demoing the actual bike to get a feel for it. If you can't do that, then think about what your riding's like. If you live in a place that's super tight, then go for the smaller size bike. If you live in a place that's very fast and wide open, go for the bigger bike. We can definitely play with seat posts enough to probably make either size work somewhat for you. A few other instances where the size might affect how a bike rides, if you have a place that's full of jumps. Oh. The smaller size bike will probably jump better than the bigger size bike. If you have tons of really steep trails and you're just holding on for dear life in most of your riding situations, then possibly the bigger bike would be a better fit because it's got more stability. A question I get way too often is how tall am I and what size bike do I ride? I try to publish this whenever I can because it's a question I get so often, but I'm just over five foot eight and if you live outside the US, I'm 174 centimeters tall. I currently ride a size medium Ibis Ritmo, a size medium Ibis HD4, and I have a size large Mojo 3. The Mojo 3 is a little bit smaller fitting than the Ritmo and the HD4. I don't know about you guys, but I am beyond stoked on how far bikes have come over the years because this more modern geometry, it allows me to ride how I want to ride. Today's bikes are more capable than ever. I can take this bike here on a 30 mile trail ride, 
The next day I could go ride a downhill race course, and then the next day I could go hit some dirt jumps. And you know what? To do that, that 10 years ago would require three very different bicycles. I hope this guide is helping people make their decision on what size bike they might want to go with in the future. And if you're thinking about a new bike, big shout out to the guys at Jensen USA, a great sponsor of mine. They stock not just Ibis, but a ton of other great brands that make a whole lot of models that utilize this great, more modern geometry. One other quick mention about Jensen, I'm doing a podcast with them, and I have a link to it in the description below. About once a month, their guy Seth and I discuss some of the ins and outs of the bike industry. Thanks for watching this video. Share with us what size bike do you have and how tall are you? Leave that in the comments below. If you like this video, I've got a subscribe button below. Click that. About once a week or so, I'll post up something new. Have a great day, everyone.